Hi there, lovely ladies. I'm back with a couple of jars here and two very noisy little chihuahuas in the background. So I hope you can't hear them. Um, what I've done is I've got two kilner jars and I've ironed. They're not ready yet. They're not complete. Uh, the painting isn't complete. But I've been ironing some images onto these kilner jars and it's so easy to do. This is definitely, definitely not for children, you know, no way is this for kids. So um, what you can see on the left hand side, I hope that's right on the screen, the one I've just taken away, was just a decal which you put into water and then you put on. But I clearly used some Mod Podge and then I put it on, but I didn't iron the decal one, if that makes any sense. So because there's a lovely feature at the front of this jar, I don't want to cover that over. So I'm going to start at the back. And I'm going to start with one of these lovely images here, which is rice paper that I bought from Amazon, um, from eBay UK. That's eBay UK. So here I've got my trusty Mod Podge and a very clean household brush. And I'm just going to paste some on, which I love to do. And then I'm going to stick the image on clearly. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to fluff that up a bit. Um... I'll try and explain to you the trouble I had with doing this method um, as we go along. So um, what, what happens is if you iron on top of glass, on top of um, this chalk paint, it can come off. But like, I was lucky and um, didn't have too many problems and I got a good result. So that's why I'm here to show you what, what I did. Um, so just pop your Mod Podge on again a fair bit because we're going to be using the steam iron and it really, you know, it, it does a good job. And um, I even uh, have used ironed tins, but they're better off in the oven, and I'll explain about that in another video. So you just pop your Mod Podge onto your kiln the jar. I think what I'd do next time is, of course, I would just use plain paint because uh, the chalk paint can be a bit... Um, a bit funny to work with really when you're doing this method. I totally made this up, I just went with it and I just thought well it worked on the box so I'm going to try it on this. So I'm just going to get that nice and you know um, put down nicely there. I'm not really using a great deal of Mod Podge, it looks like I am but I'm not. Um, so just get that piece down there and I just smooth it out with my fingers. I know a lot of ladies use um, Glad wrap or um, cling wrap or whatever you call it. Um, so I know a lot, a lot of ladies put that would put that over, you know, and then smooth it that way rather than use their fingers. But I like to use my fingers, so um, especially with good quality um, paper like this. So I'm just going to give that a really good coat because this has the uh, the paint on underneath. So I want it to sink in. When I'm using rice paper, of course, you could just leave the image to dry natural, but I really like a nice smooth image. So on goes the greaseproof paper again, if you watch part one. And I'm just going to smooth that out with my hands, as you would with your cling film or, you, you, you know, that stuff that you wrap food in. And I'm just going to wrap it around the jar and I'm going to iron it with the steam and the heat. This is why this is absolutely not for kids. Okay, so um, I'm just going to iron that on, nice and warm, nice and hot, and use steam. And um, just as long as there's some heat generated there to dry out that glue, that wonderful Mod Podge, onto our image. Now, to be really honest with you, what I normally do is I hold this against my body and I do it that way. That's why it's not for children. So just for the sake of the video, I'm just showing you... Um, you know what I'm doing with my with the iron so um, I normally hold it against my body and do it so I'm just I've got my same top on because um I made these videos in one day so just brushing all that in for you just to show you what I do feels lovely you could leave it like I said you could leave it to dry natural but um, I love to do this a bit more steam 
bit more heat just gently with this because it is glass but these um kilner jars are very tough glass really super tough so um you know you couldn't do this on a, a wine glass for instance you know you just couldn't so my little puppies are running everywhere around my feet so um i hope you can't hear them so i'm just giving it a good iron and it really does bring out the color i think the heat brings out the color if you've put anything in your oven to dry and you've brought it out, you always can see the colour come up, you know, a lot a lot richer. So that's why I do the ironing as well, because um, it does bring the colours of the napkin or the rice paper out beautifully. So I'm just going to give it a rub again. It's nice and warm. And I can feel the, the warmth is actually doing, you know, its job underneath the grease proof paper so um if ever my hubby goes out shopping and he says do you want anything i'll say yeah grease proof paper <laughs> i always have loads of it on hand so i'm just gonna kind of roll that round a bit um i don't know just by instinct really and just let it dry a bit as well before i remove the paper i'm just going to choose a nice uh, napkin now the ones that they're napkins, that's not rice paper, so I'm going to choose that one I think. And I'm going to put that onto the kilner jar and see how it looks. But before I do that, I need to take off the grease proof paper. So here it comes. I'll just um there. I just needed to pull it off a bit. Um, you know, a bit closer to my body really. Um so that's the result. The colours have come out beautiful. There's a little bit of paint missing. That's because it's glass on chalk paint. So, um, but that's that's good. I'm glad it's come off. But it doesn't make any difference. But look at the colour. There is not one single bubble anywhere. And we still have the front as it is. So let's get cracking and put some more images on. So I've just cut, cut out this image here, which is from those napkins that you saw earlier. And I'm going to put it there. And if you wanted to paint between the cracks um, or repaint the kilner jar afterwards, you certainly could do. And you could leave it. I mean, you could just put your Mod Podge on and leave it. But I'm going to um, iron the whole thing because it, it did turn out actually really nice. I've got the end result for you. If you want to just skip all this and go to the end, uh, you can. So I'm just basically going to put some Mod Podge on there as normal. I love putting on Mod Podge. I think my husband said if I stood still more than two minutes, she'd probably decoupage me, and I probably would. So I'm just going to stick that on and straighten it up a little bit, like so. I never use that cling wrap to straighten out anything. I use my fingers, so they're quite warm from the iron. So I'm um, just popping that on. And here is our third image. I've done exactly the same thing with the second image, which I did with the first. So we have our kilner jar, which is getting covered in bunnies, which is lovely. So I prefer the um, the mason jars to these kilner jars, I really do. But I guess you always prefer what other people have. Like I love American things anyway. So um, I went to Florida once with the whole family and, well, I had such a good time. I love Americans, love America. <laughs> I'm in the wrong place, I think. I should go to America and live there, but it's too late now. So um, I'm just going to put this one on. This is the third image, by the way. And the reason I'm doing this is because, like I said, it brings out the colours. And also it, um, it really does look lovely when it's finished. So you, you get the gist of it. So um, I think I'll just show the end of the, the jar pretty much. Because you, you do understand now, I think, if you're watching this, how to do it. And then you put your, your greaseproof paper on top. But just wait till it's really cool before you take it off. Otherwise, it is going to take the image off. You have to really be you know, quite patient. Here's another jar that I did. And I'm just waiting for my jar to cool. So I just thought I'd show you another jar that I did. Which was just, it wasn't a kilner jar, it was just a plain old jar. Um, and I bought these... They're actually wooden. They're very light. They're like wood shaving roses and I really love them. And I just put those in this jar 
and I keep it on my kitchen window for now. But I'm always changing my kitchen window. But um, this is one I ironed. I ironed and ironed it and uh, put some shells around it. It's okay. I mean, it's nothing startling, but um, it was the first one I did when I used the iron. So, And that was about a week ago. So um, I just put a, that's all napkins, is that? That's not rice paper at all. But you can see the result when you iron it. It, it does kind of work really well. The reason I'm showing you these roses is because I'm going to buy some more. And they're great for giveaways and things like that. But they're really pretty and they go into these jars really well. Of course, you'd have to arrange them properly. I haven't, so. Okay, the jar's nice and cool. Take off our greaseproof paper. And the colours have come up really lovely. And it's really on there well. I'm happy with that. And I put a bit at the top there, which says um, something about now. Run along and don't get into mischief. So basically there's an A that needs sorting, but I've got a pen so I can sort that out. But I think that's good, but I'm going to paint along there. So I'm going to repaint it, I think, just a, a few touches here and there. So that's where I just need to use my pen just to fix up that writing there a little bit. But over, overall, it's I'm pleased with the result. The colours are great. It's completely stuck down and mixing a little bit of Mod Podge with your paint before you paint the Kilner jar is a good trick. So it's all done and I'm pleased with the outcome. I've got a little bow to show you that I've just put on the top of the jar and it's finished. I've had three um, choices to make with the bows and I've chosen the blue, which is just lovely. So I hope you enjoyed seeing how I iron on kilner jars. You could do exactly the same thing with a mason jar. You could use any image that you wanted to, or any napkin or rice paper that you wanted to. Um, they're so easy to do. I have got a load of tins that I'm doing. I'll show you them now. These are average size tins, say a baked bean size tin. Um, I don't buy baked beans in tins actually, I buy the fridge packs, <laughs> but these are just like a soup tin or something like that, and I've been painting the insides with chalk paint and then covering the outsides with napkins, but they're not finished, they need some work, so um, I shall speak to you soon with a giveaway, we're going to have a giveaway soon, so I hope you will join me for that, and um, I will show you some of the prizes in the next video. Much love to everybody. Thank you so much for hanging in there and watching the video if you have. And I'll speak to you real soon. Bye for now. Much love.